everyone, welcome to Coding Blocks. This is part two of our series on SQL joins. In this video, we're going to pick up on the right outer join, continue through to the full outer join, and then on to the cross join. If you missed anything from part one, either click in the video here or look in the description below and follow the link over to part one. So let's go ahead and get started. We haven't even hit on the fact that we have job so let's let's uh let's take a look back up here at our inner join real quick so on this we order by the job name so let's look here we have one two actually let's order by the job id and make that a little bit easier so if we order by job id we have one two skip three four five six so it looks like nobody has whatever job number three is which happens to be self-employed. So nobody's ventured out onto their own. Well, real quick, one of the things that we notice is when you do your inner join, you lose that information. When you do the left outer join starting with persons, that's never going to show up because there was no person that had that particular job. So if we, if we order by the job ID here, we'll see that there will be no there will be no um, self-employed over here, you see? Because the left join said we want everything from the person's table, not from the jobs table. So if we wanted to get everything from the jobs it, and who it might have related to, then you could basically take this same thing and just reverse some of the join logic. So here, let's say, give us all the jobs and any people that have that that have that particular job all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to try and find all the jobs and then any associated people that might be there so we've basically got to bring jobs up here to the top or or we can just use that right outer join that we just found out about a minute ago because this is already in the correct order. So if we do it like this, now we're going to get a listing of all the jobs. So here's the job IDs and all the people that are associated with them. And you can see all the way down here, everything was filled in because people had some of these jobs. But then when we got self-employed, now we at least see that record, but there's nobody associated to it. So now we can see that. All right, so here what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we want to see a list of all the people and all the jobs and give us everything. Even if even if there is no job associated to a person or there is no uh, person associated with a job, we want everything. That's what a full outer join gives you. It gives you the full complement from all the tables. So here we're going to say person jobs full outer join jobs on the same predicate and here we're going to say full outer join on persons and you can actually get rid of the outer here as well full join will do the same thing so when we run this full outer join here we're getting all the people and we're getting all the jobs so you'll see self-employed is here somewhere there he is he has no person assigned he has no job record assigned to it and so, yes, that's exactly what we want. It's the full complement of everything. So that's perfect when you want to get a, a complete picture of what's in the two tables. Now, let's talk about the cross join. The cross join is kind of interesting. This is, it's useful in certain circumstances. Like, let's say that you're trying to populate a table or if you have 24 hours in a day and you need to populate a table with seven days a week with those 24 hours a day. All right, so here, what we're going for is, what would it look like if we had every person also have every single job available? All right. And we're doing this just because these are the tables we have to work with right now, but it will demonstrate what a cross join is. It gives you a Cartesian product. So let's do this. Select star from person P or persons P join jobs J uh, 
we need to say cross join jobs J and that's it. So now what we're going to get is we're going to get 18 people assigned to those six jobs, each one of those six jobs. So it's going to be 18 times six will be the total number of rows you get. So there you go. That's 108 rows. And so every single person in here is assigned to every single job. And if we want to see that more clearly, we can say order by P dot person ID and then J dot job ID. And here we'll see person ID one to each one of the jobs, person ID two to each one of the jobs and so on. So that is what a cross join gives you. There's, you see, there's no join predicate. It just says mix these two tables together and give me every possible result. We hope you enjoyed and learned something from this public class from coding blocks. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and also go down below and click the like button and share this with your friends, family, and anybody else who you think might benefit from the knowledge that we've provided in this video. You can find us on the web at www.codingblocks.net where you'll find blog entries, sample code, show notes for the podcast, uh, any kind of events that we plan on attending. So definitely go over there and check that out. And if you'd like to listen and learn on the go, you can head over to iTunes, Stitcher, Player.fm, or, or your favorite podcasting app and search for Coding Blocks, two separate words, and we should show up.